Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this simuli intrascleral haptic fixation model eye case using the Guter Yamani double needle stabilizer with the J&J Sensar IOL. As you know, the Yamani technique requires a lot of specific nuances and details and precision of placing the needles in the proper position in the sclera in order to get a well-centered lens without any tilt. And so Dr. Yamani came up with this instrument called the Yamani Double Needle Stabilizer made by Guter. And it's supposed to bring more consistency, more reliability, more proper placement of the needles, the proper angles. As you can see here, there's a two millimeter demarcation line where you're supposed to pass the needle through the instrument. It has a needle guide right here that actually guides and tracks the needle into the sclera and it's supposed to allow you to pass the needle through the sclera for two millimeters as it goes in on either side as you can see here with a 20 degree angle and as you pull it out you should have symmetrical needle placement and as a result a better centration with minimal tilt using this instrument so here is my model eye. This is a Simuli model eye, and this is a Sensar IOL. I'm taking it out of the case. And here's a cartridge. I put some viscoelastic and some BSS in it. And you want to seat it into the cartridge, pushing it down, making sure that the optic and the haptic are in. The leading haptic has to come out pointed out towards the barrel. It can't crimp inward, and the trailing haptic has to come out of the cartridge. And when you push this plunger, you want to make sure that the haptic doesn't engage the plunger. Now I'm placing the Yamani double needle stabilizer on the Model I. And here I'm just adjusting myself. You see that I had my marks there, but I don't need those marks since I have the hash marks on the actual device. And this is my 25 gauge needle, which I'm going to use to externalize the leading haptic. Again, this is my modification, so this is not quite how Yamani intended it, but I'm going to go ahead and externalize the leading haptic so I can cannulate the trailing haptic first. So the injector goes in with the bevel down. The needle is through a limbal incision contra-incisionally. My technician is advancing the haptic, the leading haptic. As it comes out, you want the haptic to engage the bevel of the needle. The bevel is facing towards the right. You see I'm going to engage it, dock it, and then I'm flattening out. You see how I'm turning the needle counterclockwise. And as I do that, it comes out flat. The technician advances the lens and the leading haptic goes into the bevel of the needle. I take over and I start to deliver the optic, make sure the optic comes out in the proper orientation. In this case, I'm getting caught up in the incision. That's the only issue with the model eye. Sometimes you might get engaged or maybe I just did a bad job in loading my lens. You're going to see something funny here. You can see the top actually came off the eye. I want you to know that's not because of a manufacturer's defect. That's because I actually pulled off the top because I wanted to reuse the model multiple, multiple times. And I had all of these lenses that I pushed down into the vitreous. So I wanted to take all those lenses out. But this is not designed for that. Uh, Stuart Stoll told me you're not supposed to pull off the top when you do that. It actually has glue that holds it all together. So he does not recommend pulling off the top. So please do not pull off the top on these models when you're doing this. If you want to take the lens out, you'll have to pull it out through the limbal incision or something like that. But don't pull off the top when you're using these models. As you can see, I'm engaging the 30 gauge thin wall needle through the device. You can see it's got this little tracking platform that you're supposed to push and, and it goes in at a certain angle through the sclera. So in this case, I did not bend the needle. I just kept it straight. Again, this is a fake eye. And I do the same thing on the other side. But you know, it's a little bit tricky. I, in order to maintain the needle against that tracking 
guide. It's not, it's not that easy. Again, this is my first time using it. Probably gets better as I use it more. I go ahead and pull, pull the leading haptic out more, and then I externalize the trailing haptic. And this is the corneal coating uh, viscoelastic. So this is actually something that's really great. And Dr. Stuart Stoll encouraged me to try using it. And I wasn't using it before because I felt like I had a good enough view. But you saw that this eye had multiple uses and the surface was getting a little bit difficult to see through. And this corneal coating gel is just fantastic. It really creates a really clear view. It really gets rid of any reflections and glare. And so when you're doing these cases, I do think using the corneal coating gel is really quite helpful. So I go ahead and turn the right side needle. Again, the bevel is facing the approach of the haptic. I'm going in with my micro forceps very carefully, making sure I don't put too much tension on the haptic. Relaxing a little bit. And then I'm going to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle, flattening it out, rotating my needle so it goes in straighter towards the haptic. And you can see it cannulated quite nicely. Whenever you're doing intraocular manipulations with the practice eye, you can introduce air, just push some more viscoelastic in. I go ahead and internalize the leading haptic with the micro forceps. I'm just putting a little bit more coating gel here. And you know, you could be a bit more generous than I am. I just don't want it to be spilling all over the sclera and getting all over the place. So I'm a little bit ginger about how much of that coating gel I'm putting on the eye. So go ahead and grab the leading haptic with the forceps. I'm turning the needle so the bevel is, a, so the haptic is approaching the bevel of the needle. You can see it goes in very, very nicely. And then I'm going to pull the needles out. I'm pulling towards me on the left side and away from me on the right side, which is in the direction of the approach of the haptic when I pierce the needle through the sclera. And you can see that you have a perfectly positioned haptic and lens. You know this because the haptics are fairly flat to the sclera. That means you have a nice scleral shelf. If you don't have a good scleral shelf, you'll see that the haptic is actually pointed up towards the ceiling. And when you have that, that means it's a very bad positioning of the lens. The haptic pointing towards the ceiling and pointed up vertically means there's very little scleral shelf. And therefore, this lens is most likely to tilt. That's one pearl that I'm sharing with you now. If you pull the needles out and your haptics are pointed vertical, then that's a bad, bad scleral needle placement. So you're gonna have to recannulate, pull the haptic back into the eye, and then tunnel through the sclera again so you get a nice scleral shelf. And when you pull the haptic out, it should look just like this. The haptics are fairly flat with a flat profile along the sclera. And so therefore, you're gonna have a very good optic centration with minimal tilt and good axial positioning of the lens relative to the capsular plane. With regards to the Guter Yamani double needle stabilizer, my only criticism is the diameter of the instrument is fixed. And as we all know, the diameter of every eye is different. And so in order to really use this instrument, you can't keep it stationary on the eye when you pass the needles you would have to shimmy the instrument towards the right side and making sure you're right on the limbus so you can pass the needle through the sclera on the right side. And then if the diameter is different, you'd have to shimmy the instrument over for the left side, aligning it with the limbus on the left side and then passing the needle. And so again, it's not that big of a deal, but that would be the only way to make sure that you're two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus when you're doing the needle pass. You don't want to be too anterior 
and hit the ciliary body. You don't want to be too posterior and hit the retina. And so it's very important that you have good placement of the needle relative to the limbus on either side. And as long as you do this, I do think this is a, a reasonable instrument to use. It does provide a better and more consistent angle of the needle tracking through the sclera, and you're going to be less likely to have a poor scleral shelf, again, which will likely cause the haptic to point vertically and then have the lens optic sag, which can cause that dreaded tilting of the lens. So this is my first attempt using the Guter Yamani Double Needle Stabilizer with the J&J Sensor IOL. As you saw with my trailing haptic first modification, I'm able to cannulate the haptic through the needle very easily, docking the haptic on the bevel of the needle, flattening it out, and then cannulating it very easily. And you can see as I pulled both needles out, because the haptic is a little bit bigger, then, for example, the CT Lucia lens, it doesn't tend to slip as you're pulling the needle out and it stayed nice and tight within the lumen of the needle. And so this procedure looks like it would have done very well if this was a real patient. But I do have one final point of concern. And with this technique, you have to have both needles pre-placed within the sclera. And I do have some reservations of doing that. I've never left the needles like this that has not been cannulated with the haptic, just free floating with the tip, the pointed sharp tip sitting in the vitreous space. You'd have to have both needles placed. And as you know, I like to bend my needles. What would happen if the needle swivels? And of course you're having to deal with the anatomy of the eye, the nose might be in the way and so forth. And so I do have that concern as well, leaving the two needles free in the eye when you're placing it with this Guter Yamani Double Needle Stabilizer. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.